Okay. So for this CRP, I wanted to discuss the article, uh, Culture of Disbelief. Um, in the article, it's talking about um, keeping religion separate, separating religion from your, separating your personal and your public life, is basically means, through religion. Um, it says in, in the article, it stated, in our sensible zeal to keep religion from dominating our politics, We've created a political and legal culture that presses the religiously faithful to be other than themselves, to act publicly and sometimes privately as well, as though their faith doesn't not matter to them. Um, the article says that we as the United States are one of the most religious nations on the planet. We are also one of the most zealous when it comes to protecting our public institutions from explicit you know, religious um, influence um, and by doing this and by being zealous about separate about this separation uh, we ask our citizens to to split their public and private selves in their lives uh, an example will be Hillary Clinton um, she wore to one of uh, her husband's inaugural ceremonies a religious cross um, around her neck this was seen as inappropriate in the public eye that she was bearing a um, a religious symbol in such a uh, public forum um, and being the first lady and seeing this as being inappropriate uh, at the same time if the, if the first lady can't wear a religious symbol in the public eye like she was we certainly can't expect the um, it to be appropriate for the president of the United States to wear a religious symbol. Um, and the article talks about that you know by the president not being allowed and being seen as inappropriate to bear his or her religious symbol, then we're bar from, we're barring from holding office like people such as Orthodox Jews because they wear a yarmulke. Um, and again, it's just it's just silly. It's just silly to me. I can't imagine not being able to put myself in front of our nation and be fake about it. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, another example is kind of separating the politics world uh, from from this kind of separation but talking about in business and how it actually affects some businesses. Um, it's said that it's not good to have anything on your resume um, if you're trying to uh, move up in the business world. Um, it's not good to have anything on your resume that can be traced to um, a religious organization. Um, just because of this, you can be seen as being a religious fanatic, um, which apparently is really bad for business. So, um, Mamadou Tall was one of my good friends in high school. Um, he was a practicing Muslim, and uh, he prayed at school. Um, he moved from Africa um, when I was in 10th grade, and he joined the soccer team and everything. We'd become pretty good friends. But Mamadou, uh, since he was a practicing Muslim and praying, he had to pray during uh, school. <clears throat> um, the teachers asked that um, he would be allowed to pray as long as he would do it in a private manner in which the principal and other teachers felt best was, you know, during class. Um, he would be able to be excused um, and leave the classroom to go do this. Um, I think it was so, usually during like study hall and stuff like that, classes that weren't you know hugely important or periods during the day that weren't hugely important. Um, and this kind of put a bad like a bad rep on. Um, the elders and the authority figures in the school. Um, we as students 
uh, could have cared less had he prayed inside the classroom or anything. He was very well accepted um, in my high school um, as being a practicing Muslim. He was the only one that I know of or that I can acknowledge um, that he prayed at school. And um, he was very, 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 like I said, well accepted. Uh, the students didn't take offense to it. Um, as far as I was concerned, no one in my class or the classes um, around me were shocked. None of them were shocked or appalled about him praying at school. Um, but we were more shocked and appalled that the principal and the other teachers in the school made him do it while the other students weren't around. Um, you know, and if we're gonna if we're gonna continue with this multicultural ideal and a, a multicultural society, we've really got to stop hiding um, everyone's cultural and religious differences. All it does is create more ignorance within our society. And if we're pr trying to preach multicultural education, and you know, we got to do this and we got to do that, and we've got to you know accommodate to these needs and accommodate to those needs we're really we're really being hypocritical by keeping this stuff hidden and buried down and not allowing people to really live their cultural ways so I mean and and in the school if we're not going to allow someone to pray in front of other people and we're just telling them that the, their culture is not important and um, and that while trying to preach and have a multicultural education is not you're just not you're contradicting yourself um, so we need to keep this stuff out in the open it's out there the only thing it can do is is teach and educate more people about cultural differences and make co more culturally competent students in fact, I remember in high school, it interested more people than shocked people that he was praying during school. Not a lot of people knew in my small town, Pendleton, Indiana, about the Muslim faith. Um, it was very, <clears throat> very conservative, very small, very tight-knit community. Um, Christians and Catholics, that's it. So for, for a, a Muslim faith to come in and and be willing to, you know, a Muslim person being willing to show their culture in front of other people, I found that fascinating, and so did most of the students in my high school. So, keep the multicultural education ways. We gotta stop hiding stuff, because it's taking us nowhere. Like I said, it's just making people more and more ignorant about different uh, cultures and different ways. So, anyway, those are my thoughts. Thanks.